Greetings from the Emerald Isle, whiskey lovers. My name's Al, and this is Whiskey Street. What's up, whiskey lovers? I'm Al, and welcome to another episode of Whiskey Street. Well, it's that time of the year again when much of the world glows an even brighter shade of green than the Emerald Isle itself. I'm kicking it off with an offering from the best selling Irish whiskey brand in the world, and that's Jameson. Now it's not the standard offering, but rather it's big brother Jameson Crested. Now Jameson is one of the most recognizable names across the whiskey world. It dates back to 1810, thanks to a Scotsman. Yes, you did hear me right, a Scotsman. And that Scotsman was John Jameson. But his influence on the Irish whiskey industry actually began before 1810. Based in Dublin, there was a distillery called the Steins Family Bow Street Distillery and it opened in 1780 and John Jameson became the general manager there in 1786. Now his influence was such that he took full control of the distillery in 1805 and he began to extend and change it and in 1810 he changed the name to the one that we all know and love now. So throughout the 19th century, Jameson grew not only to be the biggest distillery in Ireland, but one of the biggest in the world. Now at that time, Irish whiskey in general was booming all across the world. But that all began to change throughout the 20th century and the industry went into a real big steady decline. So now we fast forward to 1966 and big change was needed to ensure Jameson lived on. And this led to a merger with John Powers and Cork Distillers to form what was known as Irish Distillers. Now, in 1976, the new Middleton Distillery was opened in Cork, and then it was big change again in 1988 when Irish Distillers joined the Pernod Ricard portfolio, and this opened up a whole new world of opportunities right across the world for the company. Now, since then, Jameson has experienced year-on-year -year growth and once again, thankfully, Irish whiskey is booming. Now, as well as Jameson, the company produces Middleton, Redbreast, Powers, and the lovely green, yellow, and red spot whiskies. That's quite a selection, and they're all top class stuff. Now, let's get back to the Jameson Crested itself. What do we know about that? Now, it's actually a celebration of the company taking back full control of its bottling and that happened in 1963. You see, prior to that, it was a done thing to sell Irish whiskey to bonders by the cask and it was left up to them to bottle. You can see where I'm going here. Now, but as you and I know, the world is full of shysters and there's always some hallion looking to make a quick buck. So, those shysters made the whiskey stretch that wee bit further by watering it down to line their own pockets and earn a wee bit extra money. Now, definitely a scandalous carry on, but when Jameson caught on what was going on, they took back full control and did the whole process from the grain to the glass, and rightly so. Now, I have no issue if you want to water down your whiskey, mm, fair enough, but you don't want some watered down due to the fact that it's the actions of some devious shite hop who's selling to you watered down. It's just all wrong. So let's get on with the taste and see what's actually in the glass here and what we think of it. So straight off in the nose there's a touch of sherry and red fruits. Then some strawberries and cream with a bit of oak and vanilla come in there. Now you understand I'm picking up some banana undertones and that's not really something that I generally tend to usually pick up in an Irish whiskey. But it's not like normal banana is. It's a bit like banana on buttery toast with maybe a wee drop of sugar and honey on top. So let's see how it fares on the palate. Sherry trifle up front. 
citrus fruits with some brown sugar and a touch of spice but right in coming on that there's a big wave of banana now with that banana and the brown sugar it keeps a touch of sweetness but there's also maybe a wee bit of a darker side to the feel and there's also a bit of liquor that just pops in there another sip oh and here comes that big banana sugary banana buttery toastness and lightly charred oak coming in there but definitely very heavily influenced by banana now as it settles on the palate there's there's a touch of butterscotch in there too and it leads to like a medium caramel finish but still there's that banana element flowing right through it and that seems to be a theme as the bottle opens up as the dram opens up that banana influence is really really evident and if you don't like banana well that's a bad thing but for me i love banana and it's a good thing so you just have to take it as it comes so what do we think overall well <clears throat> there's definitely a lot more going on than you get in the standard jameson and it, you're getting it at not a whole big pile of money more than what you would pay for the standard it's good in fact it's very good but it does lack that wow factor now interestingly in the south african market this is sold at 43 percent abv and i'd love to sample it at that higher proof just to see the difference it would make i think it would make a good difference and it would make it stand out even more so even at that 43 percent or ideally 46 percent uh, it could transform this whiskey from very good into excellent but that said, it's still worth a pick up, particularly if you can get it at the lower price range of, say, 27. You know, it can go up to around 8 quid higher than that, depending on where you shop and where you pick it up. I had the privilege of being the first guest on the new Breaking Leather podcast by the Whiskey Cowboy. Now, it was a pre-St. Patrick's Day special, and we discussed all things relating to the day, and recommended some fine Irish whiskies to try, including this one, the Jameson Crested but you can check that link out up here now the whiskey cowboy if you haven't uh, seen his stuff is a reviewer i've always looked up to and admired and i've always benefited from his wise counsel check out his blog and podcast i can assure you you will not regret it i've included them in the links in the information section so be sure to check them out so thanks for watching fellow whiskey lovers let me know in the comments down below what St. Patrick's Day means to you, how you'll be celebrating it, and most importantly, what drams you'll be drinking on the day. So if you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe, and ring that bell to stay up to date with all things Whiskey Straight. Stay safe, and keep on drinking your whiskey the way you like it. Slauncher.